In February, I was on stage in front of 110 medical doctors and I was debating vegan. I had 45 minutes where I spoke on my subject, keto carnivore, the benefits of meat. And then he spoke for 45 minutes on how meat is bad and we need to eat more plants or go vegan. And then we debated for an hour. We took questions from the audience. And I'm going to share with you some highlights. These recordings are available for sale through the International College of Integrative Medicine, ICIMED.com. And you can buy the whole conference. You don't have to be a doctor to buy them either. So I told a lot of people about this seminar, and they were very interested in watching the debate. And it was entertaining. At least it was for me. And the audience liked it. They had fun. Now, I knew what the vegan was going to say because I've been watching and studying what vegans say since 2017. That's when they found me on YouTube and they started to attack me. I had to block um, two to three vegans per week for a year. I blocked over 300 uh, because of the mental illness, the bad words, the death threats, just a horrible experience. And I mentioned this on stage and the audience really liked to hear that because they've experienced the same thing. I will show you the clip. I received this invitation to speak on stage like this eight months earlier, and I decided I really need to brush up on what vegans are saying. Maybe there's new, some new research to back up what they're saying. I need to know what their talking points are. So I dove deep into studying what are they saying now compared to 2017, 2018. Of course, we already know that vegans will say beef will kill you if you eat it. But I also figured out that a lot of medical doctors say the same thing. They say it a little bit differently. They'll say beef will kill you if you eat too much. Well, neither statement is correct. Totally does not kill anybody. It's never, a meat has never killed anybody in the history of humanity. So, but why is it that vegans and regular medical doctors say the same thing? It's because they look at observational studies and they consider that to be science. And it's not science because there's no experiment. And they think that correlation equals causation. And there's a whole bunch of YouTubers, um, I can name names, there's Simon Hill, there is uh, Dr. Gil Caravello. There's Dr. Muhammad Allo, Dr. Terry Simpson. They all are looking at observational studies and saying, oh, look, this study proves that meat causes disease, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, you name it. And it doesn't, it's not a science. It's not science. It's a fancy survey. It could be a dietary survey. It could be LDL measurement out of your blood. The problem is there's no experimental group versus a control group. And if you don't have those two groups, then it's not science. Most nutrition studies are one group. It's called a cohort, and they'll follow this one group for five years or whatever, and they come up with math and they make some claims. But those claims are simply a hypothesis, and they need to be uh, tested by an experiment, and that's called a clinical trial or randomized clinical trial. So and this point I brought up during my talk, my 45 minutes before the debate, and I debunked everything the vegan was saying or was going to say. I'm going to show you one of my favorite clips. This is me speaking during my 45-minute talk. And this is where I jump into mental illness and veganism. And I go over, there's many surveys showing that vegans have the greatest amount of mental illness compared to other dietary groups. And I had just spoken earlier than this clip about the ketogenic diet being the best diet for resolving severe mental illness, including schizophrenia, bipolar, major depression. These are severe psychiatric problems that ketosis has been shown to uh, fix in this clinical trial, which I, you can see right here on the screen. And um, it's a small trial, 31 uh, patients. But the results are there and they need to be explored. And the heavy uh, science on ketosis for a psychiatric illness, it's really pretty new. It's only, what, five years old, maybe 10 years old at the most. So let's get into this clip right here. And I hope you enjoy, I have the audience laughing. So here's a variety of surveys showing how vegans have more mental illness. 11 out of 18 studies show greater mental illness, more depression than vegans. Another survey, community yeah. survey. Meat avoidance creates depression, anxiety, self-harm. Now I gotta bring this up because I started my YouTube career in 2013, and in 2016, 2017, I made a lot of discoveries, that's what I, Enjoy, that's what I enjoy about being in healthcare. I make these really cool discoveries and I put them on my YouTube channel. And I did a video about veganism. I said nothing bad about it. I was comparing it with the keto diet. And there are relationships between the two. And the truth is, like, I'm not anti-plant. And I have people, I recommend the pescatarian diet for some people, to be honest. I got anti-fungal diet, anti-viral diet, keto diet, carnivore, fasting. So I'm not married 
to one single diet, right? Everybody's different. And I have that kind of attitude, and I said this in this video in 2017, and I mentioned Dr. Michael Greger and Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, these are both vegan leaders, and the vegans found me. <laughs> they found me. It was a rough year. <laughs> a year. I banned over 300 from commenting and viewing my channel. The, the death threats, I'm telling you, it's, it was not fun. And that's why I have this slide up, because I experienced this firsthand. They attacked me on Facebook. I had, you guys are laughing. I'm like, but uh, they attacked me on Facebook, they gave me, you know, 25 one-star reviews, we had to call up Facebook, and then they attacked me on Twitter. You know, I woke up in the morning, one morning, and. I, I'm sitting on the toilet, right? That's the first thing you do is open up your phone. And I got these like these Twitter comments. I'm like trying to respond. Thirty minutes later, my legs are numb. I'm like, what the? <laughs> so keto, keto carnivore, excellent for mental health. <laughs> <laughs> and so we should talk about constipation during our Q&A. During our debate, we'll talk about constipation. I hope you enjoyed that. So we did talk about constipation during the Q&A uh, debate section. And I mentioned, like, everybody's different. And the carnivore keto diet exposes weaknesses in the digestive system. And I told the audience of 110 holistic doctors, I said, as a holistic doctor, you have to find out what's the weak area. Is it their gallbladder? It could be their stomach. It could be leaky gut, small intestine. It could be that they can't chew food very well. They're missing teeth or they have dentures or something. So as a doctor, figure out what's wrong with their digestive system and fix that. It could be their microbiome. Maybe they need more fiber. Maybe they need less or zero fiber. So I told the audience, you got to figure out why they get constipation. You can't blame the meat for the uh, lack of function of the digestive system. I also said that you have to increase the meat and decrease the plants gradually over time for some people. Some people can jump right into the carnivore diet or keto. Other people need to prepare their body and they have to get used to eating more meat. The next snippet here is during the debate and you have Dr. Russell Morris, he's a vegan, and he's talking about LDL cholesterol and how that's the cause of heart disease. And I interrupt him several times and I tell him, that um, it, it's only a problem if it's oxidized. And then what oxidizes LDL? Sugar, refined grains, infection. You can't just blame LDL as being a cause of heart disease. He also mentioned that veganism lowers LDL lower than a carnivore keto diet, which may or may not be true. It depends on how deep in ketosis you are in your genetics. So, and if you have a raging infection, chronic infection, the LDL could go up. So there's uh, various factors here that I just butt in and I just say them. And I'm stopping him from prom promulgating this message that our, all the cardiologists say, all the vegans say, all the standard university professors, nutritionists, et cetera, they all say LDL is a cause of heart disease, therefore lower your LDL. That is not a true statement. You have to have damage to your LDL and, and then what causes the damage. And that's where the good doctors come in and they figure that out. And it could be a familial, it could be genetic. It could be a chronic infection. It could be that you're eating too much junk food. That's the biggest one. Too much sugar, too much refined grain. So here we go with this snippet. What causes insulin receptors to become insensitive to insulin? And one of the things is LDL cholesterol, which is actually toxic to the blood vessels. And if you examine LDL particles, and you know small, dense LDL, that's even more toxic. It's all relative. It's got to be oxidized. What's that? It has to be oxidized to be toxic. Well, LDL oxidizes very easily. And the more particles you have, the more dense the LDL, the more it's going to oxidize things. But it oxidizes with infection, sugar, and seed oil. Yeah. Not the So right there, I was calling him out, saying LDL needs to be oxidized. And then I said, it doesn't get oxidized by eating meat. It gets oxidized by seed oils, uh, sugar intake, chronic infection. Right at that moment, his microphone cut out. And then he blames me, and it's funny, he does it in a funny way. 
and the audience laughs. Then they start to mess with his microphone. So I take the opportunity to stand up to the audience and they say, while they're messing with this microphone, you need to say that some people think that seed oils are good, but I have 20 some uh, studies that show that seed oils damage human tissue. So you can't say that seed oils are good for us. Of course he's going to you. Why are you doing that? Can I just jump in? So let's talk about seed oils real quick. Seed oils lower LDL. Seed oils do not raise inflammation. So therefore seed oils are healthy. Mm. I have 21 studies showing seed oils destroying human tissue. So that's another plant-based thing like corn oil, mazot, that kind of stuff. Yeah, stay away from seed oils. One of the messages from Dr. Mars's talk was about the environmental impact that humans have on the planet. And in this section right here, let me just blow this up. I'll just keep talking as I blow this up. Environmental health of our planet, species extinction, deforestation, land usage, loss of biodiversity, water usage, overfishing, dead zones such as in the Gulf of Mexico. And all of that is legitimate. And I actually brought that up in my talk too. But there is a solution that's regenerative farming. And when you look at the amount of death and destruction from monocropping, and I grew up on a commercial farm and I saw this. So we had 750 acres in Northwest Ohio, and our neighbors had 1,000 acres, 3,000 acres, or were big and small farms, and it's very sterile land. In 17 summers, I never saw deer. Monocropping agriculture that does more harm to the planet than cows grazing on grass. And when you have cows grazing on grass, that is the planet. It's ruminant animals eating grass and controlling the growth of uh, trees, and then you have predators eating the ruminant animals. That's earth. That's how it works. And you need that grass to be taken down every season because if the grass grows too tall, then it falls in the fall or winter, and then there's snow covering it, and it's never recycled by fire or by ruminant animal, then the chance of new growth in that area decreases because the soil becomes acidic, and now you have a desert. So if you want to present deserts, you have to have either fire or ruminant animals recycling the, the grass. And besides monocropping and destroying the land that way, there's also sprays. And the pesticides and herbicides, they prevent insects from growing, and the fish die, and the salamanders, and the birds, and the groundhogs, and the mice. And farming is not pro-Mother Nature. It, there's no working with Mother Nature when you're farming. You want to kill off the animals that are killing your crops. That's what it comes down to. And there's been a decrease in insect and bird populations by 40% in the last 70 years. And it's not because of cows. It's because of monocropping. And if you have a thousand acres, how many groundhogs should you have? Or mice or deer or moles? How many of those animals should you have on a thousand acres? Zero. Farmers want zero animals on those acres because it's going to kill their crop. So it's not like farmers working with Mother Nature. No, it's Mother Nature versus farmers, and it's a battle. And for the farmers to win, they have to kill off all the animals. That's just how it goes. So if you're vegan for the animals, then you should eat meat, and you should promote regenerative farming and cows and goats, etc., grazing on, on grassland. If you're not for the animals, then you should eat your broccoli and your cauliflower because um, it takes a lot of death of animals to grow produce like that. Now, during this talk, there were three times when the moderator said that there's no winners or losers in this debate because we're all winners because we're all getting this great information. And the first time they said that, the whole audience erupted in applause. I actually was surprised by that, how loud people were clapping and they were happy to have such great information. And then the second time, the moderator said, there's no winners or losers in this debate. We're all getting this great inf information. And then half the audience... Like that. But the third time they said it, not many people clapped at all. It was a very low like response to that statement. And I raised my hand like this, like I think I was the one that won that debate. There are several people in the audience that I really respect. There's a keto cardiologist out of Texas. And then uh, locally here, um, there's some doctors in Michigan that I've uh, followed and I 
respect and I've seen their social media, their interviews, their science is phenomenal. They're in the audience. And I got uh, kudos from uh, two of them in particular and more. And the people that invited me to be a speaker, they liked what I had to say. I just wanted to make sure afterwards that I would, that they were happy with my performance and they were. So it was a great event. It was one of the highlights of my careers. I've had several highlights of my careers on stage. That's where it comes down to teaching doctors the truth about nutrition. And I've, I've posted this on social media that I was on stage in front of 110 medical doctors and it's freaked out some of the conventional medical people, a cardiologist, for example, and then there's a nutrition fitness guy totally freaking out. Like what's a chiropractor doing on stage talking to medical doctors? It's like, well, I just have great information. If you want to play this game about credentials, then go ahead and play that stupid game of credentialism. But it's all about the information and the quality of the research and the science and the experience, the clinical experience. So I've been uh, studying and practicing hardcore holistic nutrition since 1993. So that's a long time. And 1993 was self-study. I entered chiropractic school in 1994. I took nutrition classes in 95, 96, graduated and just continually self-study and practicing it, not on my, just on myself, but also my patients. So literally 60,000 nutrition visits in the last five years. And in my clinic with four other nutrition practitioners, we get this great information and we get great results because it's, it's our focus. When we focused primarily on the diet and supplements, that's our, those are our two tools. We don't use drugs. But my main job in my career, in my life, is solving complex chronic illness solely through diet and supplements using both old and new clinical discoveries. So 30 years of clinical experience solely focused on that. I can uh, have a lot of insight on nutrition, uh, food, and supplements to get sick people well. And I can debate or converse with anybody on stage or not, live or recorded on any chronic illness and have some really good insights to help forward or progress the conversation with uh, the new and old clinical discoveries that I actually put into practice to get results with. So go to ICIMED.com. And you have to make an account and then give them a $35 donation and you get to see all the uh, lectures that, the, that occurred on stage for that weekend. So I hope you enjoy this debate and I'll see you at the next video.